there another question? There's one. Oh. Yep. Hi, mate. When not racing, what kind of car would you drive? When I'm not racing, what kind of car do I drive? What do you think he's going to say? What do you reckon? What do you think it might be? Hold in. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah, mate. But he secretly drives a Toyota. <laughs> Only my dreams. Um, <laughs> uh, I drive an HSV. HSV GDS. Is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. That's cool. Perks of the job. There's one at Let the back. Run right at the back. What car do you drive, mate? What car does Dad have? What does Dad drive? Yeah, oh. see? <laughs> That's is that a company way. car, is it? <laughs> Greg, you won't remember me, but I was a fat fella that you probably clipped into a Formula Ford when you were doing the driver training down at Manfield. But you, you must have a, a most respected or, or favourite driver that you've raced against. I want to know who that is and why. And also internationally, is there a driver that you, you look at, not in supercars, but in, in another form of motorsport that you, same thing, respect and admire? Um, uh, and, and who I've raced against or raced with is, uh, yeah, Ooh, let me think. It's not something I really think about a lot. I don't try to think about my peers that often. Um, it's not easy to say one, to be honest. I mean, I, uh, one guy that I that uh, um, I, I've got a lot of time for, and we still we're very good mates, and we, we uh, tend to catch up as often as we can. And at the racetrack, we always have a good laugh. Uh, and and when we were teammates, I I enjoyed his company, you know, a lot. Was um, was Rick Kelly. We got on we got on exceptionally well for a young guy, a very young guy. Um, you know, he's a lot younger than me, but um, we we got on got on very, very well, and, and um, we obviously made a pretty good team the two years that we w were together. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he's quite different to me, but he's got a, he's got a very um, uh, interesting personality, and, and he's, he's very funny, and, and, and I think he's extremely talented as well. But, uh, so we, we, had a, we had a great period together through those years, and his brother, obviously, I spent two years with as well, and the two brothers are completely different, very, very different guys, both very clever. Uh, mechanically, uh, engineering. Todd's probably one of the smartest. Uh, he could be, you know, a, a top engineer, designer, whatever he wanted to be. He's, he's incredibly intelligent in that respect. Um, so I enjoyed working with those guys. Um, they were fantastic. Um, uh, as I say, Mark Scaife, I, you know, respect for his, um, you know, I mean, he's the most successful touring car driver in Australia. And, um, you know, I think everyone had a lot of respect for him, uh, for his ability. Uh, other than that, um, Obviously, I spent, I had a, the the pleasure of um, and uh, some amazing adventures with with uh, the late Peter Brock, you know. And he, growing up, he was my, I mean, I idolised that man, you know. I, my go kart number was 05, for God's sake. So it tells you how far I was prepared to go. Um, and so I had a really interesting period of time with with Peter, and, and that was that was pretty pretty cool, you know. He's um, he's a he's a very a complex man really, in, in reality, and, and uh, a very interesting man. So uh, I've had, had uh, some good times with, with those guys. Um, overseas, um, Senna was, uh, and I, again, there's a video of that playing in the, in the museum upstairs in the exhibition, and um, really, uh, it's only very short. He's, he's doing a qualifying lap at, at uh, Japan back in 1989, wasn't it? I think it was up there, 89, in the McLaren, and... Um, uh, you know, I've, I've watched it about six times now because it's it is just an incredible piece of footage, and I I still believe he was one of um, I think he was probably the greatest F1 driver ever. I think he was better than Schumacher personally. I think um, you know obviously his death you know uh, was uh, was terrible and it, and it stopped his career obviously. <laughs> um, but uh, and and before before way before it should have ended clearly because I think. Um, the world missed out on probably the greatest battle in motorsport that you would have ever seen, and that would have been Schumacher versus Senna. There was going to be some some fireworks between those two, and we, you know, unfortunately, we were all we all missed out on missed out on it. Um, so, I, I, I just love watching everything that that man did, and, and Bob knew him very well, and and um, you know would have a lot better, you know, be able to talk a lot more about him than I would. But uh, as a driver and watching him and, and being able to watch just that footage uh, up in the up in the exhibition is the epitome of that man at, 
at a, at a level so much higher than everybody else. It's, it's just phenomenal to watch, and I, I really enjoy watching that stuff. So uh, he, was, he was very good. And the, other, the one currently that's still racing, but not on four wheels, on two wheels, is Valentino Rossi. That, 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 is, that, is, a, that is a man who um, is the, the brain and the way he functions is, is just something to behold. You watch him racing still these days, and to, to won as many world championships as what he has. But competing against the, the, uh, the guys that he is racing against at the moment and having such a mental um, advantage over them all is, is just intriguing for me to watch. So I, uh, I can't get enough of watching him on a bike. Was there any other question before we carry on? My answers are quite long, aren't they? It's good. I love it. Luckily Anyone else? I've got, luckily, I've sure. got the chance to talk to him later on, but you guys might not have. So if you've got anything to ask him, ask him now. Get, Hang on a second, just to, to, to. At Bathurst, when you go up the top of the mountain, going across the top, is there any of those ups and downs where you're actually all four wheels off the ground? Uh, the, the, the one where it's, you get the closest is, um, is the McPhillamy, which is right at the top. It's the, the highest point of the circuit, um, and, and which leads onto Skyline. Uh, so it's uh, the, the little straight before the track really drops off and starts actually descending again and uh, there is there's photographs of cars with the smallest amount of rubber touching the road from one wheel that's usually the the right rear is the one that stays on the road but there's some amazing photographs of cars uh yeah with 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 every, with clear air underneath three tires just the right rear touching the ground and, and uh so that's that's the closest we get to it um for sure and that's obviously on a fairly hot lap being able to do that with the grip that the cars provide but um yeah that nowhere else do we they, they, feel, they feel like they get very light in some places, but um, you want to keep the rubber on the road, trust me.